Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 25th, 2021 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And in case you played with a Brad's malware analysis quiz, he did post a solution. Not going to mention uh, the solution here on the podcast, just not to give away any spoilers in case someone is still working on it. But if you're looking for uh, the results and the walkthrough, check uh, today's uh, diary. And Foxit released an update to its Foxit Reader and Foxit Fandom PDF. Uh, it's uh, two PDF uh, products and the update fixes a single vulnerability that could be exploited by including a malicious JPEG in a PDF. JPEG would have to use the JPEG 2000 format, which is uh, kind of uh, common and uh, could be used to execute arbitrary code as the user opening the document. The Trend Micro Zero Day initiative is credited with finding the vulnerability, but no further details and looks like there is no proof of concept so far. And if you want to learn more about RSA keys and why you shouldn't uh, post publicly partially redacted RSA keys, well then the uh, crypto hack blog is for you. This week they published a blog post where they took a partially redacted private key that was posted on Twitter, apparently by a pen tester, and then show how the complete key may be recovered with not too much effort. They're actually stating that the hard part really was to extract the characters that were not redacted because they were posted as an image. So they had to use some OCR software to extract uh, those parts of the key. The problem here is that the private RSA key as it is uh, displayed here in the PEM format is uh, not just uh, base64 encoded random bits. Instead, it's a set of parameters that are being used to create the key. And of course, if you redact parts of uh, the output, you may not redact some of these parameters. And that's exactly sort of what they did here. Uh, they extracted a parameters that were not redacted and then it wasn't all that difficult to derive uh, the remaining parameters. And if you're interested in implementing OAuth 2, then I highly recommend uh, you are reading today's blog post by Michael Stepankin from Portsmaker. He's uh, illustrating three new vulnerabilities that he discovered in uh, two open source OAuth servers, ForgeRock OpenAM and Miter ID connect even sort of worse uh, these uh, particular vulnerabilities are likely going to show up in other implementations of the OAuth protocol as well as they're sort of a little bit inherent mistakes uh, that are pretty obvious and easy to make when you're implementing uh, this protocol. If you are using these particular implementations of OAuth then take note and watch out for updates, uh, but even if you are using other implementations, you may want to take a look at this blog post and uh, make sure that your implementation is not suffering from similar vulnerabilities. And then we have some good news for a change, and at least I hope it's a good news. Uh, Microsoft Security Response has published some numbers about the vulnerable remaining exchange servers that are still vulnerable to the proxy logon uh, issue. They do see a 92% worldwide improvement, so 92% of the originally vulnerable exchange IPs are now patched or mitigated. And just over the last week, they saw an improvement of 43%. I hope that's not just ransomware taking those servers out of commission, but tools like Microsoft's PowerShell script, for example, really seem to have made a difference in particular over the last week by making it really easy to actually mitigate this vulnerability. 
And well, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. Remember that I still have the Raspberry Pi challenge for this month. If you find an error in the podcast, just use the contact form at the Internet Storm Center website. Also, if you feel that there are any stories that I missed that I should have covered, uh, that's, of course, also a valued contribution. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.